Hey guys, hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to my channel. Slow car take over here. That was terrible. Let's try again. Hello, guys. So, nope. Hey guys, you're watching Pro Model Skips. This is Slow Car. That was better. <sighs> In this video, I'll be telling you about stuff you need for modeling if you're a starter. Now, I do not have all of it. I know, I should have planned ahead, but. Uh, stuff you need for modeling. And I'm gonna talk about miniatures specifically. Like you have, oh shit. Yeah, anyway. Miniatures, like if you wanna make models, Stamia models or anything like that. Rebel kits, eh, not get FX. Eh. None of these brands sponsor me. I don't want it. I don't know how that works. So, it is burning hot in my room. I'm gonna turn on the fan, but no, this is a video. I would sound weird. Welcome back to my channel and in this video I'll be talking about stuff you need for miniature modeling or just modeling in general. So things you need. Let's start off with the basics. Scissors. They're very useful. You can cut stuff with them. Fine, back to scissors. You should use scissors, they are actually useful for cutting stuff. This is such stupid advice. Yeah, anyway, yeah. See your stuff. And uh, toothpicks. Oh, come on. Toothpicks are actually pretty useful for cleaning your tools, such as airbrushes, which I will get into later. Or you can just break them and add them as sticks in your models. I'll just give you an example. One second. So, guys, uh, just to give you an example of how useful toothpicks are, this is the sewage diorama I made. There are a bunch of toothpicks sprinkled on it to make it look like it's a sewer. What's wood doing down in the sewer? I don't know, and frankly, no one cares. It's a sewer. That's just enough. Just you can you actually just clean stuff with these mainly for cleaning, or you could just be like me, add them into a diorama, and then just keep this. And then you'll be needing cotton swabs. Again, useful for cleaning. If you do not have these, you have to go with a nail or something. Or These are actually just really convenient for cleaning your airbrush. They get in crevices and stuff like that. Now, another very basic thing. I'm actually going to be going through everything. Because many people just don't, you know. Glue. Get the whole box. You know you're going to waste all of it using it on your hands. Peeling it off. Don't do that. I didn't do it. So get the big barrels of glue. You will actually need them. Uh, not this glue in specifically. You can just get any type of, but Fevicol is the most common. Then you need watered down glue. This is just a random box I had and I filled it up with watered down glue. Now to make watered down glue, it's just pretty simple. You take glue, you take water, you mix it, boom, watered down glue. What this does is, Fevicol is actually pretty thick, right? So when you Add stuff on it unless just fixing something extremely strong which you won't do with Fevicol because it's you're not making anything other than a model which you won't fix with Fevicol. Water down glue actually helps in adding sand and stuff like in the sewage diorama I made there's a lot of textures on it which is just sand I collected from outside and filtered. This is your consistency of thick water. Right. So you can actually just brush it on and then add whatever you want. Water down glue is actually very useful and very underrated tool. I don't know why I said that. It's not underrated. Tape. Masking tape. This is just any tape in general. Which is not good. But yeah. Like for many models in which you have to cover up some parts. If you didn't previously paint them. You do not want to ruin the paint job. So take the tape. Cut it into the shape you want and just apply it. And don't be scared if the table cut it off. Do not use extremely strong tape. I'd recommend putting the tape on the table and peeling it off, peeling it off until a lot of the, you know, stickiness has just left it. So it's just there to cover. You can also use masking putty, which I don't have. I've ordered it. It's not come yet, but masking putty is like, you can just make it into any shape and then peel it off. It really won't do anything. You can just reuse it again and again and again. It's like the consistency of a kneadable eraser. Then, another extremely important thing. Ow! I'm not a murderer. 
Anyway, back to seriousness. A screwdriver. I don't know why that's in here. I just kept it for emergencies. But then, of course, you need blades. Blades. So, like, when you get models, you come with mold lines. Right? And I didn't show them to you yet. I will show you. They come with mold lines, which are basically just res a residue of what was left when they were molded. And they don't exactly look good, so you can actually just use a knife to just scrape them off a bit. Make sure you don't go deep into the model, which I will show you in another video. These are all the types of ones you can get. This was actually the cheapest I could find. It's also very useful. You have all the sorts of knives. The only problem is your friends enter the room and this is just kept on the table. They think you're a serial killer. That's the only problem. But you can hide them under your desk but jokes aside you should have these and if your parents don't allow you have your parents around while you're doing them my parents allow me they don't allow me in the kitchen but they'll allow me to use knives and then you will need tamiya this is basically an extra thin cement you can use this in two ways this is mainly for sticking the models you get many parts you have to stick them together this works in two ways one is when you just join the pieces together and apply it on the outside. The glue is so thin, it will slip between and it will basically just melt or weld the model together. Or you can just put it on, put it on top, which from, it just welds it from the bottom. I personally use the around one. This is much easier for it to dry. But yes, you have to have this. Without this, you're probably not going to be able to model. It is the best one in the market. They're not sponsoring me. But you know, if Tamiya watches this, I'm open to sponsoring, you know. So, always have extra thin cement. It's basically like plastic. And it's like super glue, except it's made for specific stuff. Now, this is another extra thin cement I have. It is just like this, except I can't figure out how to get this open. Do not call me stupid. This doesn't open. And another thing you should always wear while using airbrushes or this stuff, because this has fumes which can cause cancer. I use these for one month without realizing they can cause cancer if you're not wearing a face mask. After that, I was on Google for eight hours a day. So, a respirator. These, you need to have. If you're using styrofoam, if you're shaving down styrofoam, the fumes can actually, are very bad for your lungs. And these things too. So, always remember to wear these. Not randomly. For reason. Another thing you will need, which is not on the tool side of things, but it is certainly very, uh, you know, what is the word? Important to modeling and painting the airbrush. This comes in many parts. And I will show that to you when I set it up. See, these are the parts of the airbrush. One second. These are the parts of the airbrush. Focus, focus, please. Yeah. So basically, you have the tubing which can, uh, which makes the air flow from the compressor to this, and then you have the basic power outlet, not the outlet, the thing that connects. It. Basically, it fits in there, and you have the airbrush. I will be getting into how you use an airbrush later, like in another video. I know I keep saying that for everything, but. Uh, this cannot be in a video with other things. This has to be a completely... You cannot... If you want and you're a kinesthetic learner like me, you can just go ahead and fool around with the airbrush and see how it works. Or otherwise, you're like my dad. You just want a billion YouTube videos to see how you do it or read the instructions, which no one does. So the airbrush comes in many parts, which I'll be getting into later. Just to show you what an airbrush is, let me just uh, open it up for you. This, guys, is an airbrush. Now, you have that tool to... Open some parts up and that is just in case one of these blows. It won't happen just in case it blows. So the airbrush is basically a tool in which you can add acrylic paint and just spray. It gives a very equal coating unlike paintbrush. Also it's, it's too bright. Yeah. Also it gives a very equal coating on everything. If you do not have this in the miniature hobby, you cannot have a miniature hobby. You know what I mean? This is like in top 10, this will probably come at top 2 after Tamiya. This is actually a starter airbrush kit. It's like for beginners like me. There are the expensive ones which are made for professionals, which I don't recommend recommend you buying unless you fool around with these. 
and I will get back to you when I pack this up. Come, let's get back to the last three tools you need. And these are not important tools. They're not very important, but they're important. Like one of them is important. The other two you might not need. Super glue. This is pretty important. Like some things Tamiya cannot stick together. It's specifically made for plastic and resin models. So super glue comes in handy when you're making models which have photo etch parts such as like the gun barrels, aluminum. Super glue is the thing you should use. It is very important. It is it comes closer to Tamiya, but you know, not as right. Like a lot of models have photo etch parts, but uh, many of them don't. Most of them do have like all the. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. 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 What would happen? I'm kidding. I didn't taste it. Oh, here's an example. Cotton swab. Super glue cleaning. <laughs> cloth very important just go to your mom's kitchen and grab any random cloth you use and it's yeah it's gone so another thing you'll need is petroleum jelly you do not need this petroleum jelly you can just use Nivea or Vaseline because when some models like many models you have to actually detail which is like you know let's see many of them you have to use MC for like to you know grab out those details like all the side things it helps so that the things don't stick to your hand right it's actually pretty useful when you're using m seal or stuff like that then we have this you might be wondering what this is this is a homemade holder so basically what you can do is drill two holes in and stick your tiny model so you don't have to hold it this is actually made of like that thing you drill into walls and some tape and the door stopper it's pretty useful it's actually this took me like 30 seconds to make i was feeling bored and i was like hey might as well make something and i made this and it's pretty useful i've used it for a lot of my dioramas and let me just show you how it works so this right here guys is a 1 to 30 second scale model right this was painted by me wait 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 focus 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 on my face do not focus on my face. There we go. This is a custom painted by me. And when you're painting small models like this, you really can't touch them. I don't know if that you didn't know that already, but you can just drill two holes in the feet and just put them down like that. Or you can use some masking putty and just hold them there with the putty, which is much easier than drilling holes. Another thing you will need, which I don't have, is a Dremel kit. Instead of using a screwdriver to drill in the holes, a Dremel kit. So just get a Dremel kit. Now, this hobby is very expensive. It's quite expensive. But, you know, it's not you who's paying for it. Anyway, that's a joke. I went through all the tools you will need and there's one last tool left. You don't need to have it. I'm just saying. It's a good add-on to it. A cutting board ouch so basically it's a self healing board so when you're cutting up your model or you know just cutting on the parts you can just place the parts on this so you don't have to scratch up your table when you're using your exacto knife. what this board does it'll just heal the cuts it'll just cover them up it it's like magic I'll give you an example right now bold exacto knives Ouch, why is that so hard to do? One exacto knife. Me. I'll give you a good visual of this. See? Self healing board. Exacto knife. Board? Knife. I'll uh, focus. There we go. Oh, wrong side. Swipe. You have to wait for two seconds for it to close the whole thing up. Yeah, we'll get back to that. In all the stuff you need, or not all, I'm a beginner, as you know. I just showed you stuff you have to use if you're going to make your hobby. If you just decide that one day, 
hey let's order a miniature and paint it you're probably gonna spoil that miniature because you didn't have the stuff to paint it and you're probably gonna ruin your health while you're at it that's why you should always wear respirators and stuff like that so the moral of this video is buy everything like a lot of stuff that i have to use is not here yet like it's not necessary what i ordered what i ordered but you know it's that thing you can wear which zooms in but i'd say the most important tools you need if you're going into modeling are an airbrush obviously exacto knives and tamiya and paint brushes and paint if you have these things dioramas is a completely different but if you're painting a warhammer model or something like that these will suffice but you won't get the best result another thing you will need let me just show you a wet palette i told you guys about this so i'm not explaining about it you know i already went on a rant about the wet palette in the last video other things we'll be needing are let's see a hot glue gun ouch hot glue guns are actually pretty useful when you're gluing stuff together so is tamiya but hot glue guns are meant for like much bigger things like styrofoam to make dioramas again get into that later ah here's my diorama making kit but this video is about models so who cares i'll show you in any video <sighs> see this has a bunch of rocks you can just go outside and collect them for dioramas like i did for the sewers right and then this thing go to your mom's kitchen a lot of my tools are from my mom's kitchen so you go to your mom's kitchen take a tea stainer so when you're using dirt and stuff like that to give textures to your models you really don't want unnatural stuff to get into it like paper cigarettes things you just sieve the dirt out it's pure dirt now i just as you can see i'm very organized this is pure dirt i collected sandy dirt which is what i mainly use for my dioramas you can use other stuff but this takes a lot of work to do you have to go look for stuff and uh, my dad just entered the room sorry you have to go look for this stuff and otherwise you can just be lazy and order it on amazon but that takes a lot of time to arrive so you know it's probably smart to go downstairs watch your neighbor look at you in a weird way while you pick up dirt and see if there's rocks on the road which you can pick up and tissue paper i don't need to explain that part to you do i exactly <sighs> and another thing you will be needing is of course a bits box that sounds very weird but a bits box so in this you can basically keep all the spare parts you find like let's say you buy a tamiya kit and you have a few extra parts do not throw them away you can actually use them for another diorama they can be actual re actually really good add-ons like just the other day when i was i finished building my like their panzer khush wagon i didn't say it right ldkfz so it came with one whole spare figure i was not going to throw it away obviously it's very useful i could use it in another diorama the only problem is it wasn't of that scale so i couldn't use it but i kept it and just random pieces of old toys you have like let's say you have a transformer and you broke it how sad you have to throw it away now or you could just fix it or like me you could take your exacto knife and start butchering it and use all those extra pieces in your bit box so let's say you want to build a custom model you can use the pieces of that transformer and add it on and glue it together this is where super glue comes in you do not need to use a tamiya it's expensive i think that will be it for this video guys ouch do i have anything else to... ah the last thing you need for model making a model and this is one of the models i haven't started yet this is the <laughs> Panzerkopf wagon. Oh, that was. <sighs> this is the Panzerkopf wagon, and it is a very big model. But uh, I will be making it. Hopefully, you guys see it. Anyway, so these are all the beginnings things you need for model making. 
you can also just buy a custom stand but see this look at how practical this is you don't need to buy one just rip off your door hold stopper and take out a fix picture frame and take out the thing that's holding it together and remove take some tape so i will get back to you guys on the next one <laughs> outro number 2